Well, guys, it's 8.30. It's that time of the night. Welcome, everyone. Welcome our Novate Nation and friends of the Novate Nation. Thank you so, so much for joining us this evening. My name is Julia Ladowski. I'm the marketing manager here at Novate and your host this evening. Um, so this is our treasure trove call, guys. We do them every single week at the same time, Wednesday nights, 8.30. So you can be here next week if you would like as well, but these are great calls. Um, Tonight, we have two amazing guests and co-hosts with me as well, Dr. Anthony Kleinsmith and Katie Kleinsmith. Dr. K is the owner, founder, formulator at Innovate. Um, he has a PhD in nutrition. He's been considered the world's leading expert in colostrum, you guys, um, and has been for the last 30 years. He's a true champion for the people, and his life mission is to really make ethical products accessible to the masses and really everybody on the planet by empowering our Innovate ambassadors and maybe like somebody who invited you on this call tonight. Um, that's how we get to share it with the world, and that's pretty cool. So, Dr. K, thanks for being on. Thank you very much for having me. All right, and, we're going to have a fun call. Yeah, and we've got Katie Kleinsmith as well, you guys. She is our CAO and our Director of Marketing, and she's also our resident skincare expert. Um, she is the co-formulator of our beloved Innovate face serum and face cream. So we're really glad to have her on the call this evening. And uh, with that, Dr. K, I think we can uh, get right into and jump into what everybody's most excited about and on their seats, on the edge of their seats tonight. Absolutely. You know, folks, it's kind of fun when you come across something that uh, works, right? Uh, and in these trying times, we all need something that is uh, definitely a workable defense for each and every one of us, right? And it literally, when we say hydrating and sanitizing mist, it is just that. It is something that is exceptionally unique, right? And it gives us the defense that we're looking for. Every time that I go out, at least now, right? You got to have a mask on. And it's almost like you have the Kashapo standing by the door saying, did you put your hand into that sanitizer? No, thank you. I, I no. Put your hand in the sanitizer. No, thank you. I put your hand in the sanitizer. We're not going to let you in the store almost, right? And then I pull out my little bottle and I go, no, I've got my own, right? And what's fun about that is it hydrates, yes. right? We're going to get it's into all of that. I know he gets oh. so excited. <laughs> what I am because... Well, tonight we're going to be doing some things, right? We're going to be separating fact from fiction. We're going to be talking about the dangers of alcohol sanitizers, right? Some of you saw something that Katie and I did just a couple of days ago. And like I said at the very beginning, so that I don't get myself in too much trouble going too far ahead, we're going to try to do something, or I'm going to try to do something tonight that hopefully I don't burn down my house, right? Um, but Katie's going to get into the, the alcohol ages your skin, and it does a lot more from that. Then we're going to get into ours our version of you know it's something that's interesting because when you when you look at sanitizers folks i don't care what you're looking at as a sanitizer it is designed to do one thing it is designed to kill bugs bacteria viruses fungus right the fda came out with a monograph and it said these are the only things now i know i'm jumping ahead a little bit uh and and i can see the grimace on on julia's face but we're going to go into some of the separating the facts from the from the fiction right because everybody out there is really even in the state of utah anybody that's doing bottling or anything else they've all moved to this kind of alcohol-based thing right so what is the definition of a sanitizer, period? It's, its role in life is to kill bad germs, right? It is to kill the negativity that surrounds us and that we touch. Anytime that you touch something, you know, unless it's been in your pocket for the, for the entire of its life, anybody else that's touched it has left something behind, right? So that definition of sanitizer is just that. It's designed to kill. So with that, with that stated, let's get into some of the basics, right? There are different types of sanitizer that are out there, antiseptics, wash products, surface sterilizers that you can use at, at home and what have you. They, they hope that it remains on your hands, right, longer to provide some protection. But if you're using a, an alcohol base, the moment that you don't smell it is also the moment 
that your protection is pretty much gone, right? In the medical world, hand sanitizers are known as rubs because they rub it in, they break things down, they want to get it in, right? It's almost like a little massage that they do, right? And it's designed to be rubbed onto the hand so that it also doesn't rinse off. Well, if you've ever played with an alcohol base, you can literally wash that gone, right? The basics then of hand sanitizers is just that. It's designed to sterilize, to kill things that we definitely do not want on us, okay? And the FDA put out a monograph and they said, here's the rule on safety and effectiveness of consumer hand sanitizers. And there's only three things. And if you don't use these three things, folks, there is no body out there who can say they have a sanitizer because the FDA says, these three things right here, ethyl alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, and benzoconium chloride, or BAC for short, BAC, BAC, those are the only three things that have a 99.99% kill rate. Now, the problem with some of this is this. Some of these things, uh, and, and by the way, ethyl alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, those are the biggest things that are out there, right? You're going to learn tonight but so there are also some of the most dangerous things that are out there because people don't realize that there are some, there's some significant, significant danger that comes with these things that everybody is promoting, right? As of October 31st, 2020, American Association of Poison Control managed to have 20,000, over 20,000 exposure cases related to hand sanitizers in children that are 12 and younger, 20,000 phone calls of saying my child is poisoned by something that you all out there in the in the media are telling us we have to have. Now I agree that you want to you want to you want to maintain that exposure, right? You want to keep all of that negativity at bay as much as you can. But twenty thousand children is way too many. That's that's twenty thousand too many for me, right? And there's more to this, right? There's much more to that exposure that comes along with it. It's not just that these things happen to kids. They're flammable, right? Alcohol can burn. It is lethal to ingest it, right? There are harmful health rumors. They're not rumors, right? When you, a rumor is something that somebody spreads, but when you have statistics going into hospitals that are blind, that are dying, because of their exposure to alcohol without the, the, the other side, the, hey, there are some risks that come with these alcohol-based sanitizers. Do they kill? Yes, they do, 99.99. But can they do some other things as well? Yes. Let's keep going. Katie and I did something the other day, and I want to I want to do this. Uh, I know. Look, look at me. It looks like a little kid, right, with a with a toy. Ooh. I'm well, so glad do... you're in your own house tonight, Doctor K. <laughs> Are you sure? But you had two people. You had Katie, right? Well, folks, this is a hand sanitizer. It's an alcohol base, and it's interesting as I spray this in, uh, and it it smells right. Can you see that? Look at that, y'all. That's pretty scary. Right. That is what you are putting on your bodies. That is what you're putting on your bodies. Now, I'll, I'll blow that out so I make sure that we don't burn anything down. <laughs> no, and I'm I have to say, don't try that at home. Yeah, don't try that at home, folks. Don't try but here's, that at home. Here's, here's the thing with that. That's what you're putting on, right? That's what you're putting on your bodies. And the horror stories that come with it, children that don't know, right? They're using it. They're not the only ones at risk. Adults, they turn the stove on or they strike a match or they light a candle or whatever the case may be, boom, and it can explode, literally. Just ask the parents of this little girl. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a real news story that took place because she thought she was doing the right thing and got too close to a flame and it ignited. That's one too many, right? That's one too many children. That's the one area for me that I, I never waver on, right? You never mess with kids. 
these sanitizers are, they do their job, but there's a better way. There's something more, right? Let's keep going because this is just one thing that, that takes place that's on the negative side. Ingestion, right? You cannot, they, they're literally classified as an over-the-counter drug. Our manufacturing facility just today got our certification as a drug facility, right? We are registered now as an OTC facility to make these types of things. But we wanna make sure that they're doing it in a way that yes, we're giving you the protection. But we don't wanna have folks calling the American Poison Control over 20,000 times just because somebody ingested something, right? And the marketing today is, is, is phenomenally bad for me, right? Because they, they, they make these bottles so that it looks cool. It almost looks like you could actually drink these things down like they're a snack or something, right? And that's wrong. That's, that should be, these folks should be penalized and sued because they make it too simple, right? Too simple. Bad marketing. Okay. Katie, why don't you jump in here and explain this one? Because I watched this. Katie said, Dad, you got, let me tell you this story. Katie, you tell them on this one. Yes. Okay. So I came across this story and this is something that I follow and find very interesting. It's a channel and they do different topics every week and it's called What If. And like I said, they do every week a new topic and it so happened that um, I believe this week it popped up and it said what if you fell into a pool full of hand sanitizer and of course that stood out to me so I said I have to watch this video well I'm glad that I did because I know from the research that we've done as you know the corporate entity of Innovate we've done a lot of research and have all the factual information and statistics, but even watching this video just last night, I learned new things and it's all negative. And it was interesting to watch um, because they explain different things and different scenarios if you fell into a pool of hand sanitizer. And basically to break it down, they say first, if you fall in, any little cut, any little scrape, even the ones that you aren't aware of on your body will burn. And I think that we've all experienced that where we have maybe a hangnail or a paper cut on our hands and we've put hand sanitizer on and we feel the burn, right? We feel that stinging oh. sensation and it hurts. Now, if you fell into a pool of hand sanitizer, definitely not fun. Now they went into the eyes if you got any in your eyes, even a drop of it, it could strip your eye of the moisture, um, natural moisture and tear barrier that it has. And you could even go blind, which is terrifying um, because I know that even the, the sanitizers that are alcohol-based that we use, you know, they can splash up and kids get into them as we've seen and you can get that in your eyes and that's very scary. Now, it says, basically, if you survive at the end um, and you get out of this pool of hand sanitizer, um, of course, you would have to wash this off right away. And what would happen, um, because the skin is the largest organ of the body, and that is what has immediately been exposed to the sanitizer, wash it off. But even with washing it all off, if you've been exposed to it for that long and that much of it, your skin will literally crack, burn, and peel off just like a snake, which would not be fun. <laughs> so definitely don't want to fall into a pool full of hand sanitizer, but also you really don't want to use hand sanitizer every single day. It's not great for you if it's alcohol-based. And it's okay with using it on our hands because our skin on our hands is a little bit different than the skin on some of the other parts of our body that's definitely more sensitive. But even still, if we're using it that much on our hands, it's going to have negative effects. Totally. And you know what's so interesting about this, Katie? I mean, guys, this is on Snapchat. And um, she sent me the link to this. And the cover of the video, it's obviously like it's, it was meant to be a spoof. This was something that was kind of going around on social media because of kind of the pandemic. And people were joking about this, right? But if you like got into a bathtub full of sanitizer, 
but they wanted to really draw attention to the fact that, hey guys, I know you're doing this as a prank on social media, but this is actually severely dangerous. It right. can be alcohol poisoning or even kill you. So don't do it. Um, which kind, kind of brings us to the next one, which was harmful rumors. Um, Dr. K, you know what this reminds me of before you get into this? Does anybody remember the Tide Pod Challenge that some really <laughs> neighbors yes. Yeah. yeah. This is almost yep. like that. Doc, why don't you talk about this? But here's what's interesting about that version. Tide, you, you, it's a different look, right? Young kids are looking, and I not everybody, but young kids are looking to get alcohol, right? So they think, well, geez, this is alcohol. I can drink this. And they have been doing that. And they're ending up in the hospital. They're ending up blind. They're ending up with alcohol poisonings where they've seriously permanently damaged their liver and other organs. They're ending up dead, right? And despite all the FDA warnings and, and everything else that they put out there, the men, uh, menthol alcohol and, and everything that is there, they put out these severe dangers and FDA warnings and everything else. And people just disregard them because they go, it's alcohol, right? Can you drink the stuff? Yes, you can. Will it get you drunk? Yes, it will. Will it make you go blind and potentially lead to your death? Yes, it could, right? And again, it just brings us back to these things that are out there that people are, especially in today's environment, are pushing down everybody's throat saying, you got to do, you got to do, you got to do. There's a different way, right? There's a better way of doing things. Let's take a look at uh, some other things here. Katie, jump into this one because you're you're sort of our, our skin, our resident skin <laughs> expert. Absolutely. So, of course, this time of year, especially this time of year, we all have dry skin, right? Because the winter, the winter air, just the cold air is chapping our skin already. And that's not a good thing for our skin. Moisturizing is super important. But on top of that, we're using hand sanitizer because in this day and age, right? That's what we do every day. We go to the grocery store, we get gas in our cars and we use it throughout the day, multiple times throughout the day. And right. that is terrible for the skin. And I think everybody here, especially us women can attest to if our skin is looking dry and especially if our skin is being depleted, right? Um, and it's drying out our skin, our skin starts to have that crepey sandpaper effects, which in turn leads to aging effects like wrinkles and sagging and different things. And especially this picture right here of the hand, the skin can actually get so exposed to it. There's something called tool as well. And that's trans epidermal water loss. And what that alcohol in the hand sanitizer is essentially doing is bringing the moisture out of the skin to the surface and it's evaporating that moisture within our skin. And we use this so much on our hands, even though our hands are sort of a tough skin, thick skin, if you will, compared to other parts of our bodies, the skin there, it can still take a pretty bad beating. And if we are using certain products and toxins on our hand that much, we can see things like this happen where our skin is not looking great. It can be like sandpaper, very, very dry. And if we overuse it, we can see peeling, cracking and bleeding as well, which is no fun. And then of course, if you are experiencing cracking and bleeding on your hands, the last thing you want to do is put more hand sanitizer on because you'll feel that stinging. Oh, sensation. burning. <laughs> Burning, oh, burning, yeah, right. I I caught one of I caught one of a I caught a lady who actually she's doing this when I was when I was making the deposits today she's doing this and I'm like, yes, said, what is what is wrong? Oh, I got to put my hand sanitizer on, but my my hands are so dry they're cracked and mm -hmm. it just burns and I and I I almost said here have a bottle of this, right? And I actually have done exactly that. I've walked up people where they've actually had, where they're open cracks. And I said, here, let me try this. Oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna have any of that. I said, trust me. I give them a couple of spritz. They go, what is this? This does not hurt. And this is nice. Mm -hmm. This makes my skin smooth. <laughs> that's where we have a little bit of a difference in what we're putting out there, right, folks? 
Okay. And not only, I want to add to that a little bit. Not only is it not drying out the skin, it is adding moisture back in. That's so right. So it's the best of both worlds. So let's meet the safe solution, uh, your defense against these negative and bad germs. You see, we went a different direction. The FDA says sanitizers, there's only three. And if it's going to be a sanitizer, it's got to fit within that monograph. And it has to have a 99.99% effectiveness against these different germs, viruses, uh, funguses, right? The monograph is very, very specific. Well, everybody shot off and went through and went to the alcohol-based ones. We went through BAC, B-A-C. And what we started looking at is how do we make this even better? Well, I came across somebody out there who is kind of like me. He's a little nutty, he's a little crazy, and comes up with these wild things. And we got together and said, you know what? Let's turn this into something that we can put out there and help people. Is it a revolutionary formula? Absolutely, folks. This thing right here is revolutionary. Not only if you use it, it has a, it has a little bit of a, a citrus scent to it. There's no alcohol in this whatsoever, right? But it's also a proprietary microencapsulation. That encapsulation captures and defends you. The moment that you stop smelling, literally smelling that alcohol, your sanitation is done. It's gone. It's already dissipated in the air. It's an aromatic. This is not. It's not water-based. It's not alcohol-based. We are in the process, folks, and we just got it today. We're in the process of literally having our own NDC code. And you'll see that on the next round of labels when we release this because it's going to have our own NDC code. We'll even put it on our website so that people can click on it and go, hey, this is a registered FDA approved hand sanitizer. It's alcohol free, water free, gel free, sting free, sticky free. It has a coconut oil infused with it so it, it leaves your hands nice and silky and smooth and soft. It's that micro encapsulation. It's almost like a, a glove being put on, but it has a six hour defense. Six hours, folks. What would it be to put one of these in your car? You get in, you get out, you're spraying, you're washing, right? And you're protecting for six hours. And you don't have that smell, you don't have that sting, you don't have that burn, right? Let's keep going, because it gets better. Right now, here's where it gets interesting for me, because if some of you have watched our little uh, blurbs on Facebook Live, we've gone into different places and and I right, I love this one. I haven't used it up yet, so I haven't put it into the big bottle. But here's where it gets interesting because it's water free. You can add your own essential oil, your own perfume that you love, your own cologne and immediately mixes in can't do that with water based you can't do that with alcohol based now here's what's interesting if you want to try something which is always fun in my book well i like menthol personally i like eucalyptus too but i like menthol and for healthy breathing menthol and here let me roll hold this up menthol and eucalyptus both help to open up our breathing passages. It helps us to breathe better even when you have to have your coverings on, right? And the nice thing is it mixes well. Spray more than just your hands, right? How many people get into their cars and they spray the steering wheel or you spray whatever it is that you're touching out and about, right? You want to make sure your phones, right? I go to Costco. I walk around every Sunday and I play my music loud. I actually have had people follow me. And you know what's funny? I had my I had my one with lavender in it. And I'm spraying it on it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love that smell, right? I love lavender. Well, I can put that in first defense. And I'm getting that passageway opening up. And I'm breathing again, right? And not only am I breathing again, but first defense does its job on any surface. 
kind of fun, right? Kind of fun. Very versatile. Some, some people out there might be familiar with a, another certain hand sanitizer in this industry that may already have an essential oil with it. But what you mm -hmm. may not know, guys, is that it is 75% ethyl alcohol based, meaning it is also flammable, it is also toxic, and it is not good for your skin. <laughs> it is not natural. Kind of fun. Yeah. Kind of fun. <laughs> it gives us a much different perspective because I'll tell you one thing right now. Do not try, do not even, don't even attempt this one. Do not try to take an, an alcohol base and put it into your mask. No. Okay. You could actually burn your lungs from doing that. Okay. With this one, not at all. Right. I guess I should. That's my little bottle. Yeah, this is my big bottle. I haven't even used one. one. <laughs> right. But try it. If you have your most favorite something, put it in there. If you like smelling great and people are going to go, what are you doing? I love the way it makes me hands feel. And I like the way I smell. Or I like to breathe better, right? Especially when you're having to wear one of these things. Pretty much, and if if things take off like they're being told, we might have to wear these for the next hundred days, inside, outside, upside, and downside, right? <laughs> I want to be able to breathe while I'm doing it. Yes. Now, Doc, let's tell yeah. people how they can use first defense. Now, here's how simple this is, and I and I mean it's this simple, right? You want to apply one or two, even on the even on my mask, I do three spritzes, but on my hands, I'll do two, right? I can see the wetness in there. Now, what I'll do is I'll wash my hands. I'll get in between the fingers, right? It's like you're spending 20 seconds in the bathroom and you're washing everything. I just covered my entire hands, top, front, bottom. I moisturize them at the same time and i got a six hour defense right that's all you're doing and just let yourself go it gives you that nice silky smooth soft protection for six hours and people are going to say well aren't you going to spray it again i don't need to i got six hours of coverage right here in my hands right or in my mask right and if I've got eucalyptus or if I've got uh, menthol in there, I'm breathing easier and I'm out and about, right? Kind of different, kind of nice. I love it. Well, next up, guys, we're going to hear from three people who were a part of our trial when we were testing this, part of our own mini clinical. Um, so first up is Karen Weatherford. Okay, perfect. I am so excited about this product and I want to share just briefly what I have done with it, with this little bottle here. Um, I work retail store, have a couple businesses and everything. So I'm in every day, six days a week, I'm in contact with a lot of people. So what I did was I took one of my bottles and I started demoing it, told them what was coming. I said, we've got something new and exciting and I said, it has no alcohol and it has no water in it. So I said, I would like for you to try it. Well, cutting to the chase, I have a large list of people who said, please tell me when I can order this. The excitement about it is, is because they can do their hands once. In six hours, they're protected. They've got a shield of protection, like Dr. K said. But the biggest thing that I'm excited about is there's not a classroom in the United States that every teacher needs a bottle of this. And I intend to start with our local schools presenting this product to them because this is something other that every child needs the safety of it, the purity of it, and the fact that those little germy hands won't be picking up all of those germs. So, um, Again, I've gotten great, great response, Julia, from this. It's been uh, an amazing thing. Uh, and like I said, and people are excited about it. They love it whenever they put it on their hands. And the biggest thing I like about it is my hands are soft and they're silky yeah. soft. And that's what my customers and all have noticed. So I love that. Karen, thank you so much. And thank you for thinking of our teachers. You know, I like to think of those folks as, um, people that are on the front line as well, just like our yeah. nurses and doctors and all of that. So that's a really great point. So 
thank you so much for sharing, Karen, and being on. Next up, you guys, we have Mr. Corvey Winbush. Q, are you there? Well, I don't know. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> sure. I can hear and see you. Hey, what's going on? Listen, oh, man, uh, Karen's right. Uh, teachers, me being a, a coach, a mentor, you know, I'm back in the school system. Uh, it's a lot of traffic. You know, people don't realize how confined we are and just how on top of each other we are, you know, in a school system. But uh, for me, I, I too was part of the test trial, you know, got the bottle and uh, I couldn't get anybody to try it at first. Reason is because uh, little birdie <laughs> told everybody that I was responsible. I had a, another little squirt bottle and it was a prank fart spray. So nobody would trust me to spray their hands. And finally I broke through and they would allow me to start spraying their hands. But the teachers were just absolutely blown away. Even I was blown away. You know, I'm a guy. I don't care about soft hands and moisturizers and all that kind of stuff. But when I tried first defense, my hands, I mean, it was, oh, it was so amazing. It was like grabbing a silk sheet or something and just rubbing it together. And it smells good. I had one teacher you know, she said, it just, it smells so clean. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know what that means, but yes, it smells amazing. And, you know, for everybody, you know, um, just that hand dryness from the sanitizer, you know, what's been going on in the country here lately, uh, people have been overdoing hand sanitizer, you know, you guys touched on that, but, uh, you know, everybody's hands are just so dried out because you're doing everything you can to try to stay safe, but you're paying an ultimate price at the same time. And so, you know, I was just walking up and down the halls. And once I finally got people to realize this isn't prank spray, you know, they started trying it out and they were going crazy and the word started spreading. And so, you know, I told them I can clean your mask. You know, I had one teacher, she was like, I hate wearing this thing. You know, I just feel like my breath stinks and I feel like I could smell my own breath when, you know, maybe she could, but, uh, you know, I started spraying people's masks and I'm like, look, it sanitizes your mask breathing in is good it's not toxic and so it got to a point to where you know i'd be standing on duty and teachers would come by you know and they'd walk up and just hold their hands out it was like dude spray me down and i'm like get out of here you know you're gonna wear my bottle out you know they wanted to get their hands sprayed their mask sprayed and it was almost like uh i like i was the corner convenience store standing out there in the hallway teachers would just walk by and want to get you know, tightened up with the spray. And so uh, like Karen said, you know, so many people are just anticipating and waiting for it to be available to order because I mean, it, it, it addresses all the issues we have with, you know, just, just protecting ourselves, but in the, in the process, you know, taking care of ourselves because you don't want to, you know, eliminate one problem, but create two or three others. So it's been exciting guys, you know, just the test bottle. I can't wait for what's about to happen just for everybody to have this available to them. Awesome, Corvey, I love that, thank you. And you know what's funny about the mask, guys? He's right. I mean, if your mask stinks, I had a friend liken it to being like, if you don't clean that thing, it's kind of like walking around wearing a dirty diaper on your face. So yeah. think about that next time you don't clean your mask. I know that's a bit TMI, guys, but it's, it's true. <laughs> and there's something that is they're calling mask me. Um, yeah. So having a clean mask definitely helps your skin too. Absolutely. Right. Oh my gosh. Such a great point, Katie. Such a great point. All righty. Next up, we have Miss Rose Allison. Rose, are you there? Yes. Whoops. I was. <laughs> now I'm back. Yes. Um, I don't work outside in the public as Q and Karen do. So I've just kept my little bottle in my pocket. And everywhere I go, I just look for opportunities. And we were at Dollywood last week with our grandkids and every ride had these little, not little, big bottles of sanitizer. And they expected these kids, every time they were getting on a ride to put this nasty stuff on their hands. And as a grandma, I'm super picky. And I was like, kids, no, 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 don't use that stuff. And so I squirted um, their hands. And the first time I did it, my little one was saying, oh, but Grammy, this stuff cleans our hands. I said, 
yeah, but this stuff cleans it better. And then you don't need to use it again the rest of the night. You're done. <laughs> You're through. This is good. So I sprayed it on them and our middle one said, oh, he just kept rubbing his hands like that. And he said, Grammy, it's just so soft. He was so accustomed to the yucky stuff um, that he just loved it. And then the little bitty one just kept putting her hands over and she said, Grammy, your stuff smells good. <laughs> so I was thrilled at that response. And then it was also, we have um, our daughter's a medical professional professional in between patients she always has to do the major hand washing thing yep. and I said boy have I got something for you after tonight and I started telling her a little bit and she said this is going to be really good so think about your healthcare professionals who are constantly washing yeah. their hands with that nasty stuff we've got a winner on our hands for sure we do you know that and that's what's fun about it is if you want the honest truth from anybody ask a child right? They are exceptionally honest. They're going to tell you if it's icky, if it's nasty, if it doesn't smell good, they're going to let you know. But they're also going to tell you if it is nice, if it is good, right? And doc, somebody actually said in the chat that their daughter, uh, daughter-in-law was a nurse who's allowed only one of the N96 mask, masks a week. So what we have coming up for you guys next, you're going to love. Guys, we have an introductory bundle that is live on the site tonight, right now, you can go ahead and order. Um, get back with the person who invited you to this call. If you were invited by somebody, get their link and you can purchase it through them. And for a limited time only, because this is a brand new thing, you guys, you can buy three and get one free. And then for all of these people that we've been talking about tonight, teachers, police officers, health professionals, just everyone in your family, if you have a big family, you guys, get this bundle. It's not going to last long. This is an amazing deal. And I promise you guys are going to want to have these on hand. And we know that they are going to fly off the shelves. You know how Amazon sold out of um, all sorts of uh, PP and sanitizer when this thing first happened to us uh, at the beginning of 2020? You're going to want this stuff on hand, guys, because I know it's going to fly off the shelf. Um, yeah. But act fast. So that really, I love this. Make intention Make your intention prevention, protect with first defense. That's what absolutely. About, and I and I gotta I gotta take my hat off to you, Julia and Jesse, for coming up with that shield, because that that is a perfect representation of what is going on trying to get in, and all of a sudden, boom, you do have that that prevention, right? You can now protect yourself and do it in a way that you don't have old, wrinkly, crackly hands. With that, have a fantastic rest of your week. Thanks, everybody. We'll Thanks, see you all everyone. next week. Bye, guys. Bye.